Okay, we're going to talk about triangles today. And we're going to go back to, hang on one second. Okay, we're going to go to page 483 in the textbook. And the main thing that we want to pick up from this page is that don't get freaked out about how the triangle is drawn. Don't let that bother you. Doesn't matter how it's drawn. You only need to look for a couple things. We always look for where is the right triangle. Because we know the right triangle is going to tell us if we go straight out the middle of the right triangle, what is always on the other side? The hypotenuse is always in the opposite side of the 90 degree angle, right? So we can always find that, right? We can always find the hypotenuse. Okay, now, if we assume one end or the other, let's say this one down here, and this one down here, and this one down here, then whatever angle is straight across from that angle is the side opposite. And then, we only have one thing left over, and that's the one that's next to that angle. Opposite, hypotenuse, this must be adjacent. So that must be adjacent. It's kind of the leftover one, isn't it? Now, if the angle, if we select a different angle, of course, it'll be the opposite and the adjacent will be flipped around, right? So it's just which side are we looking at this thing from is the important factor. Now, any time I give you a triangle, I'm almost always going to draw it like this. And your angle is going to be on the left. Your 90 is going to be over here. Because we do the same thing with motor circuits and a pardon me, AC circuits and conduit bending all the time. So we might as well just make it the same triangle every time to make it easy to work with. Okay, so I'm always going to make it look like this, except on one quiz you should be taking someday soon about this chapter. And one of the pages, it'll throw the triangle some odd angle, and it'll have numbers on this thing, like in our book, let's see, this one has, let me put the numbers back on this thing. I have to put my glasses on, sorry for the delay. So we have 63 on this one. We have 65 on this one. And we have 16 on this one. What other ones did I grab? I think I grabbed that one. Yep. We have 9 feet here. 41 feet here, 40 feet here, and this one, 8, 15, and 17. Now, the reason that we want to look at this is we have to look at what angle we're looking at. Now, in this one, we're going to pick these small ends down here every time for our angle, okay? Because generally speaking, we're not going to, the angles that happen in electrical work, generally speaking, not all the time, but generally speaking, will be less than 45 degrees. Okay? They might start out above that, but we're going to work at, in the second semester, we work at getting that back down to as close as zero as possible without going past zero. But that's, that's a whole different Oprah. Okay? But generally speaking, we're going to wind up with triangles that look more like this than anything else. Okay, so the only bad thing is that you might not always see this thing drawn out the way I draw them. So you need to be able to recognize what's what, no matter what. Okay, so if I say, now we got to, we're going to put a reminder up on the board. Sine, cosine, tangent is, oh hell, another hour of agony. Okay, oh hell another hour of agony just like homework. Okay, and so I think you can remember that. So if I say 
what is the sign, and let's say this is triangle A. What is the sign of triangle A? This is the angle we're talking about, right? The sign of that angle, sine of theta, any angle on the world is called theta. The sine of theta is, okay, it's opposite. Where's the opposite in this one? It's 16, right? Okay, and it's 16 over what? 65, thank you very much. That's exactly correct. So we found the opposite and we found the hypotenuse. Exactly. Now what if I want to find the, let's call this angle B, this one right here. And we're going to say of angle B, what is cosine of theta B? 9 over 44, someone says. Okay, let's look at that. Where is the adjacent? This is the adjacent. Say again. Oh, it's 40. It's not 9. Okay. So it's 40 because this is the side opposite, right? Okay. No. Yes, 9 is the side opposite. My apologies. Oh, we're doing cosine. I'm sorry. Very good. <laughs> I'm not paying attention. We want to find the adjacent, and we know the adjacent is this side right here in this one particular case, right? So that's 40 over, and then the hypotenuse is 41. Is it only 41? All right. I guess that's possible. Because usually the hypotenuse will be at l a little more than the side it is. Okay, so that just means it's a low angle. I don't see any 44s on there. 9, 41, and 40. Okay, so now let's find the tent. Let's call this one angle C. Let's call this angle C. We want to find the tangent of theta C. And the tangent is the opposite now this is the, oh, the one of the reasons you really need to memorize this is because when you go oh hell no the hour of agony you got to remember that of agony the order is important the order is important of agony the side opposite and this one is eight and the adjacent is fifteen everybody agree with that everybody see it anybody not see that and does anybody not see that. Okay, we're okay with that, right? Okay, so we have found a sine, cosine, and tangent from odd-looking triangles. And sometimes you have to look at it and go, well, which one is which here? Okay? All right, let me hit pause for a second, and we're going to re... Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to look at a real-world application of this triangle stuff. Something that you'll use fairly often. I want to tell you about some electrical work... I know you don't know anything about it. A lot of you don't know anything about it just yet. But one of the things you do a, a lot is you bend conduit and you put it up places. Now, I want you to look up on the wall over here and see how if you're running conduit down that wall, you see the two places in that wall where the wall comes out four or five inches or six inches, whatever it may be? What if I wanted the conduit to run along the wall and then come out, lay flat on that, obstruction and go back to the wall. That's called an offset up and an offset down. Let's look at the board now and we're going to call this that obstruction. The wall is sticking out and we want to go over it. Okay? And then later we're going to come back down and go back onto the wall, right? This is a very common thing to do. Now, electricians have what's called a uh, multiplier. It's a really cool little trick where you can just multiply the amount of distance from point A to point B. Let me do that again. From point A to point B. And then, for instance, if you're using a 30-degree kick, meaning this angle right here is only 30 degrees, and you can see in this case, it doesn't, not that one. I've just drawn the wrong angle. Sorry. Let me fix this real quick. And if this angle is only 30 degrees, then we can just double this distance and 
we can take this distance here. Let's say this is 9 inches from top to bottom. We can just take that distance and double it and mark the, where we want the first bend to be on the conduit and then go down twice that distance and put another mark on the conduit and bend it 30 degrees up at this one, flip it over, bend it 30 degrees back that way, and it'll come out perfect every time. The problem with that is what? 30 degrees does not always work. Sometimes there's not enough time. 30 degrees is a very gentle bend, right? That's a nice thing. Makes it easy to pull. But what if you don't have the room for that? What if you've got to bend it at a steeper angle? And if it's not exactly 30 degrees, if it's 35 degrees, it's not going to work. You see what I'm saying? There's another one from 45 degrees, but that's so steep that you almost never want to use it. If you put a 45 and a 45 in a conduit, you just put a 90 in, a, in the conduit, right? Put it in the morning. You're only allowed four 90s total bend in any conduit run, period. And you never want to have that much degree bend in a conduit, ever. So those cute little multipliers, they don't work all the time, do they? You still have to get over that object, don't you? What if you want a smaller degree bend or a higher degree bend? Oh, Oh my God, we can't do that. Some people can't. 80% of the people working in the field cannot do that. I am not joking with you. Okay? All of you will have conduit bending before you get out of here, first of all. And in the second place, from this class, you're going to know, I don't care what angle they want, I can make it work. I can make that conduit walk, talk, and tell you a story. I can make that conduit do anything I want it to do because I know the math behind this. So let's figure out some math. Now, again, let me say that these two bends are exactly the opposite number of degrees. Now let's say that we're going to use not 30 degrees, because we don't want to use that. Anybody, any moron can do that, right? Let's use 25 degrees. I want to put less bend in it if I can. So I'm going to put a 25 here. Now what do you think the distance between this bend and this bend is called in this triangle that we've just created? Hypotenuse is exactly right. The distance between the bends is called the hypotenuse. So we're looking for the hypotenuse, right? Now what do we know? We know the side opposite. Okay? Let me put our little reminder up here. Okay? That's our little reminder. And let me remind you that it is illegal to write that on a quiz before the quiz starts. But once the quiz is started, you can write a reminder or anything you want on the, on the test, right? Or on a piece of scratch paper, like sine, cosine, tangent, oh, hell, another of agony, just as a reminder to you how this thing works, right? Okay. So now let's say that we've chosen an angle of 25 degrees. So first of all, let me tell you that in our calculator, We can find any one of those fun functions because we know the angle we're going to use. So those are solid numbers because it's a fractional relationship between a side and a side, right? So that's an actual hard, hard number. So we have a number already. We have one, the angle. So we have sine, cosine, and tangent. And we have the what? The opposite. What are we looking for? We have the opposite, and we're looking for the hypotenuse. Now, it doesn't work out exactly the way we want because, well, we'll see. Let's look at, pull out your calculators, hit clear twice, and just punch in sine 25. Sine, upper left-hand button, 25, enter. And we get... 4, 4, 2, 2, 6. Thank you. 
Now that's a hard number. That is the relationship between the opposite and the hypotenuse. So we know that is equal to, now we have, did we decide how tall this obstruction was? Not yet. We're going to say it's 18 inches. We're, it's not this little one on the wall. We're going over an I-beam, an 18-inch I-beam. Okay? So we know it's 18 over the hypotenuse. Okay. I've got two solid numbers and one variable. I can figure this out. Now, the simplest way to do this, oh, wait a minute. I need to teach you the Hiriochita slip and slide is what he calls it. You know that if you have A is equal to B over C, that also B over A is equal to C. Everybody knows that, right? Because you can multiply both sides by C, and that'll get this down to a 3 over 1, a B over 1, and then you can divide both sides by time A times B, and then you can divide both sides by C, and get C is on one. So you can get it very easily from algebra by multiplying out, right? But what I want you to remember, forget that. That's too hard. Just remember that you can take these two things and exchange them. That's why Hero calls it his own slip and slide rule. Just switch them. Now, it doesn't matter that you remember that you can multiply them out, divide them out. Forget all that. Just switch them. So 18 over 0 0.4226 is equal to the hypotenuse. Now, what's in your calculator right now? I'm going to teach you to love that calculator even more right now. You've got 0 0.4222, right? Don't touch it. Just put in 18. Punch in 18. Now, divide by second function, that little bar up in the left. Answer, which is the lower right hand corner white button. Now hit enter. You just divided by the last answer you found, which is point uh, four two two six. Okay, except it used that whole long number instead of whacking it off to point four two two six. So it's even more accurate than doing it the hard way. So what did we get? So what you're telling me? Now wait a minute. Now we have to go back to the first week of this class because I have no idea what the hell 0.59 inches is. Do you? It's over half an inch. 0.5 is half, right? It's 0.09 more than an inch. More than a half inch, I mean. Right? Well, what the hell does that mean? Oh, we need to convert this back to tape measure because what are we going to put this measurement on this pipe with? A tape measure. Does it have 0.59 inches on it? Hell no. Okay. There are a couple of ways of doing this. But what I like is we've got 42. Write that on a piece of paper so you can't lose it. It's 42 inches. We know that part, right? We can find that on the tape measure. 42 inches. We can find that. That's marked on there. No problem. It's that 0.59 we've got trouble with. Now hit minus 42. My, minus, four, uh, minus 42, enter. And you get 0.59, right? Okay, now, hit divide by. Now, what do we want to divide by? Eighths or sixteenths? Okay, a sixteenth is 0 0.0625, right? So divide by 0 0.0625. Because we remembered that number from the first week. And what do we get? 9.4, less than half a sixteenth farther. So it's 9 sixteenths strong. A blonde hair, you'll pardon the expression, past 9 sixteenths. In other words, just a tiny bit. In other words, we're, when we find 9 sixteenths on our tape measure, we're going to just go to the far side of the line. That's all we're going to do. And I can guarantee you that's going to be close enough that it will be so accurate, so close, it'll fit perfectly every time. Okay? Because you, your pencil's so wide that you probably overshot your 30 seconds of an inch going past it, marking it on the back side of the line. Okay? You're less than a, th you're less than a 30 second off, right? I guarantee you, 
half of a 30 second is close enough for any work, okay? If you can keep it down to that close, I'm telling you, people will be amazed by your work all the time. That's a good thing. Okay, so now we have the basic idea of bending pipe and how we use this triangle thing, right? Let's do that again. Okay, now we're going to look at this from a different point of view. We're going to look at this as a conduit bending exercise, but this time we're going to say, what angle do we need to use if? Because there are going to be times when there are things in the way. And let's say that there is a rack of I-beams that are cut to let a piece of conduit sit on top of them, and they're running across your path. So they're totally in the way. And then, worse yet, there's another piece of pipe up here running across your path in the way above where you have to go. So what I'm saying is you have a small window of opportunity to get into this thing. You only have a small area where you can go through, and sometimes this happens, where you can only get through at that one point right there. And what you do is you stick your conduit in, take a piece of conduit, test piece of conduit, the size you need to get through there, and you just slide it in there. And then you take a level on it and level it up, and what do you do? You get a measurement down to the ground, the level that you're going to be running the other conduit on. So now what do you have? You have your side opposite, right? And you found it because, well, I've got to get through this slot only, and I've only got a little bit. Now let's say I have a little bit on top, and maybe I don't want to lay right on the thing that's in there. Let's say that we have a 25-inch object here that we want to get over, but we want to be half an inch above it. And we've got two inches above that we could use, so we're going to say 25 and a half inches. Okay, we want to be 25 and a half inches. And worse than that, there's another conduit running through across our path in here. So we've got to kind of lay it down and wiggle it in. So this thing's going to have to be cut off up here, and it's going to have to be slid into this spot. It's going to have to be worked into the spot. So it's going to be difficult to get it in there. So it's going to have to be right on the money, and it's got to be just so, right? Now, what do we know? We, do we know an angle? We don't know an angle yet, but we took a measurement from here to here. Now, what if we have this conduit sitting here, we took a measurement down to the ground. Would that be our hypotenuse? Really? You sure of that? Okay. It might be. I think it would be too. So we know two things now, right? We know the hypotenuse. Let's, what is our hypotenuse? Somebody give me a guess. 32 inches, I like it. 32 inches. So it's a pretty steep angle, right? It's going to be tough getting this thing in there at all, if we can, get, if we can even get in this thing, right? And it, if we cut it off too often, we've got to brace it on each side of every time it's cut. So you don't want to cut it if you can avoid it. So we're going to look at this and we're going to say, okay, we have a triangle. We know that the hypotenuse is 32 inches, and the side opposite is 25 and a half inches. What function do we have? We have the hypotenuse. We have the side opposite. We have the sign. The sine of this angle is equal to O over H. What is O in this case? 25 and a half over 32. How or oh, however could I find that angle? I pull out my handy dandy TI-30X2S, which I just happen to have with me on the job, and I hit clear, I turn it on and I hit clear twice. And I hit second function sine 
25 and a half, 25.5, divided by 32, enter. And it says, it says what, 52? That's over 45, but I have to. It's where I can get in. Right? So it's 52.83 degrees. So if I put my marks 32 inches apart and bend it 52 and almost 53 degrees, wait a minute, I've got room to spare on the top, right? I'm going to bend it 53 and 53. What's it going to do? It's going to set a little higher above the half inch. Can you figure out how much? Put that away for later. Write that down. If I bend it 53 on both angles, how much will it sit above 52 and a half? It's a really good question. The easy answer is not very much. <laughs> No, ask, ask a fellow student. Okay. Okay, now, there's an OSHA rule that says that if you take 116, you'll talk about safety. And one of the safety rules is that when you lean a ladder up against a wall or anything, that for every four feet up it goes, it's got to be a foot away from the wall. Okay, so that's a four to one ratio. Can everybody see the triangle that's been formed here? Okay. Now, I want to take this up and say that I have a thirty-eight foot garden wall that I need to get up above. How far away from the bottom has it got to be? Well, gee, I don't know. If we look at this angle down here, and just call that the angle. Can we do that? That's not the normal angle we usually work with, right? Because this is going to be a very steep angle. This is going to be like 75 degrees or something like that, right? So... We can look at this, and we can see that if it were 40 feet, they would probably be 10 feet out from the wall, right? We know it's going to be about 10 feet, and that's called ballparking. So we know it's, our answer should come out to around 10 feet, right? A little less than 10 feet. So let's take a look at the numbers that we're going to have for this, and... Okay, so if we call this the angle in this one particular case, which one is the side opposite? Is that the four? So what is the what is this one right here? That's the adjacent. So what function do we have? We have a tangent. Okay, so first of all, we want to find this angle because what we're really doing is we're stretching this angle up 38 feet, and we're keeping the angle the same, right? We're pulling this angle back. Can everybody see that? We're pulling this angle back to extend it. We're taking it from here. We're pulling it all the way back here, and it keeps the same relationship as it goes up. So we know we want to, first of all, let's find the angle, okay? So... We're going to pull out our handy-dandy TI-30X2S. We're going to hit clear twice. And now we want to find the angle, so that's a second function. Second function, tangent. And which one is the side opposite? 4 divided by 1. That's still 4. So second function, tangent, 4, enter. 4 over 1 is 4, right? So the tangent is 4 even. Tangent is the only function where you have a number over 1. That's the function. Okay, so the tangent is 4. 
hit enter and we find out that it is 75.9 degrees. Now don't take that out yet. Now we want to move over here where we have, what angle is this over here again? Is that the opposite? Right through this line must be the, that's the opposite, right? Okay. So we know we have the opposite. Are we looking for the, for the, um, we want to know how long the ladder we got to have is, right? So we're looking for the hypotenuse. Okay, we have the opposite. We're looking for the hypotenuse. We can always find the sine if we know the angle. We just found the angle, right? So let's punch in. Now you've got an angle in your calculator, right? Hit sign. Now, I think you're going to have to put in second function answer. And enter, and we should get a sign. Okay, now just to check and make sure, I want one volunteer to hit clear and put sign 75.9 enter. Just make sure that we did the right thing. Clear, sign, 75.9, enter. Same number? Amazing. We cross-checked, right? Zero point. Now, 9698 and a bunch of other numbers. Now, let's leave that in our calculator because that is equal to what? The sine of the angle, which is O over H. We're looking for H, right? What is O in this case? Four. So you're saying I've got a solid number there, a solid number here, and I've got this H over here. I'm going to do the here you cheetah slip and slide or switch, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to rewrite this thing as H is equal to four divided by zero point. 9698. But I've got this in my calculator already, right? So I'm just going to put in 4, just enter 4, divided by second function answer. That's the last thing you found, which is 0.9698 and that whole long number. In other words, we're going to keep the accuracy. Hit enter. We're looking for the hypotenuse. How long of a ladder do we need? I switched questions in the middle of the question, didn't I? Okay. How long a ladder do I need? Too many erasures in here? It could be over 38 feet. What is that, Evan? I don't know. Okay. Let's back up. What we did is we found the angle, right? Second function, tangent. Turn the calculator on first. Hit clear. Second function, tangent, 4 is equal to 75.9637565353 and on and on and on, right? Now, we want 4 divided by that number, right? No. We want the sine of this angle. Okay, sine, second function, answer, enter. The sine is 0.97014. 97014, you gave me the wrong sign. Okay, close enough for the girls you go with. You know, when you're making 100 grand, your standards are going to go up. All right? 97014 and on and on. Okay. So now we want to divide 4 by all that mess, right? 4 divided by a second function answer, enter. I got the wrong answer. Sign. I made a mistake someplace. Let me back up. Okay. I want to find the hypotenuse. Oh, I forgot to invert it? No, because I went 4 divided by 0.97. Oh, 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 thank you. 4 divided by 0.96, 
Up uh, nine. Was it nine seven zero one four or nine six nine eight? Nine seven zero one four. Let's call it close enough. I'm still coming out with the wrong answer. Oh, oh 38, not 4. Oh, 38, not 4. This has got to be 38. You've got to call me when I make little mistakes like that, or big mistakes like that. This is supposed to be 38 feet. Okay. Let's get the sign of that thing again. So second function, let me pause while we back up a little bit. Okay, so if we do it correctly and divide 38 by 0.97014 in that whole long number, we'll find a number of 39.1695. Not much longer than 38 feet. A little over foot. Now, you know that, that means we're going to have a 40-foot ladder. 40-foot ladder is not long enough because OSHA says you get to have three feet sticking above whatever you climb up on. So 40-foot ladder and the longest and the extension ladder comes in is 44. So we just have to find the longest extension ladder in the whole world. Stick it as long, up as far as it'll go. And when three feet sticking up, pull it out about nine and a half feet, ten feet, and we'll be fine, right? We won't go flying off the ladder. Okay. A lot of complex kind of calculations just to put a ladder up against the wall, right? But you know what? If you put it up wrong and you get hurt, workman's comp doesn't have to pay you. So turn brain on before engaging hands. Always. Okay? All right. Thank you. 